Let it be known that I hate poultry netting more than anything else on this frickin' planet. Enjoy the fresh grass, everybody. It's gonna be your new home for the summer. What do you think about that, Black Francis? Yeah, you got something to say about it, girl? They're probably a little mad right now because their usual routine is disrupted. They're getting out later than usual. They're in a totally different place. I even forgot to bring up their chicken feed. So yeah, they're cranky. In fact, these chickens might be as cranky as our yearling heifers here who are mad that they can't get close to their moms anymore. How's it going, Bonnie McMurray? You guys are gonna move pretty soon too, further down the pasture. I'm not moving these two gals every day just cause there's just no need for it. They, uh, as you can see, have plenty of grass, so I just let them take their time. So these chickens are going to live up here this entire summer. They're going to be keeping watch over the flies and insects and ticks and... <laughs> They will basically have the job of following my cattle. So the cattle are right there. The goal is going to be have them, I don't know, between three and seven days behind the cattle every single time I move them. I'll probably leave them in paddocks like the one they're in right now for a week at a time. I've experimented before with trying to move them every day and I've just found it's just not worth the effort and time it takes. 
you know, moving the coupe itself with the ATV, particularly when you're on flat land, is no big deal or not a problem. But when you're trying to move both the chickens and the poultry netting, it kind of sucks. And yes, I have poultry netting here. I've been using this stuff for years. I've had these poultry nets for, I don't know, probably, let's see, I got them in 2018. So these are the six seasons on them. You can start to see that over time, they start to break and fall apart. And so, I don't know, I'll probably be replacing them in the not too distant future. I'll keep them electrified too, so that the birds don't get out. The purpose of the poultry netting is twofold. It's one, to keep the birds where I want them, and then two, keep animals like the cattle, as well as maybe Abby or even predators from coming in and bothering the chickens. But that said, I don't see it as a very effective primary form of predator control. Their house though is actually very secure. So for nighttime predators, I think that that's gonna be pretty good. The biggest risks I'm gonna have are the aerial predators, I think. But I don't know, it's gonna be a risk that I just get comfortable with taking. You know, it's really to help manage the insects and pest load, as well as help fertilize the ground, as well as provide us with eggs. And so if I do lose one or two to a hawk in a given year, I'm really not gonna curse it. It's just the hawk doing what they're meant to do and trying to scratch out a living and I'm just trying to scratch out a living and these chickens are just trying to scratch out a living and that's really what all creatures on earth are trying to do and so you can't fault a hawk for being a hawk. Ugh. Oh boy. So it looks like I have some problems. This lumber which secures the whole coop to the trailer bed seemed to snap off and it broke. Unlike last year, based on some advice by viewers, I actually went ahead and added multiple points of security to ensure that this doesn't wiggle around or move on me. And I am so glad I did because golly, that could have been a disaster bringing it up the hill. As it is, before I move this for the next week, I'm gonna have to come through and do some repairs and like fix that and reattach it to the front end. It's actually all supposed to look like this where I've got, you know, this timber lock screw, I've got a bolt coming in, and so I've got multiple points of connection, but it seems like the braces ended up bending, and so now I'm gonna have to replace that. It definitely got my heart pumping, but no real big disaster here. How's it going, girls? You're still readjusting? Oh, we got a moron brother, we got Carmen. Yeah, these girls seem a little cranky still. Uh, give them a little time to adjust. What are you doing back there, lady? So the way this coop is designed, right, it's got the roosts for them for sleeping. It's got this mesh wire floor, which lets their manure mostly fall through the bottom here and just land on the pasture. They've got these roll away nesting boxes, which work pretty darn well in keeping the eggs clean. And so this coop design, this will be the second year I'm using it. I'm actually overall very happy with it. I think if I were to do a redesign, I would just try to make it lighter and more durable. That's my biggest problem with it, as you guys saw earlier in this video. But overall, I think it serves exactly the purpose I was hoping it would. All right, and then I'm just going to use these clips to connect our electricity and we will be in business. So you can already see that this barred rock chicken here started scratching and picking through that cow pie. That's exactly the type of behavior you want to see. It's actually why I get to feed my chickens less too, because they get to eat the cow poops. Well, it's actually not exactly true. They eat the insects in the cow poops. How are you ladies doing? Excited about your new roommates? Or I guess I shouldn't say roommates, they're more neighbors than roommates. Yeah, they'll be following you all summer. Trying to help keep the flies away. I also have to start putting out my fly traps. So far, the weather has been cool enough in the mornings that it really has helped keep the fly populations down, but I won't be getting that lucky over the next couple of weeks. And so as I learned as a really important lesson last year, the more you trap your flies and keep the populations down initially, the better off your animals are gonna be in the future. I just moved these girls into this paddock last night, and so I would say probably by later this afternoon, I'll move them into the next spot. I don't like driving the side-by-side -side nearly as much as my farm bike, but oftentimes different tasks require different vehicles. Oh shoot, what the heck is going on here? Joey Ramon, how the heck did you get out? What are you doing out there, kid? This is one of those mornings on the farm. Ugh. I think when I had to move the gates to get the coop out, I don't know, maybe I loosened something up and I'm gonna guess he probably slipped right underneath it. Joey is a little bit of an escape artist and so I think that's my guess of what he did. All right, let's try to get him back in. Come on, Joey. You gotta go that away. Yep. Back in.
I feel like that right there is the benefit of frequently working with your cattle. I see exactly what happened. I think he slipped under that spot now that this is all loosened up. Get any ideas there, Randy? These two are gonna be moving up to the top of the pasture very soon to join the cows. But I can definitely tell they're getting antsier and antsier, so I don't know, maybe I'm gonna move them sooner. All right, so hopefully that'll keep them from trying to escape again. Uh-oh, looks like the weird chickens escaped. Yeah, I've moved the weird chickens into the hoop coop. Now with the other chickens moved out. I know some folks want to know why I keep them separate. And the reason is because the bigger chickens will beat up on the little chickens. And so the weird chickens are going to stay down around this area all summer. I'll be moving their weird chicken house to different places. But for right now, I just had them in here for ease of containment. I don't love having them wandering with Abby wandering just because they're so tempting for her. I'm very impressed. You didn't get into any mischief with those weird chickens. Good job. But she's going to be moving up with the other chickens as well as the cattle very soon. By the way, you guys might notice that we're down to only three weird chickens. That's because one of them found a new home. Yes, a new home. But we'll probably be adding some new weird chickens very soon, so stay tuned. So our beehives are actually doing really, really well. About a week ago, or I don't know, eight days ago maybe, I installed new hives. I installed two hives specifically. So as you guys know, we went into the winter last year with three beehives. Two of the hives I had installed earlier that spring. The third hive was actually a hive that I caught and installed in September. And unfortunately, because it was so late when I set them up, and even though I tried to give them extra feed and give them everything they needed, that first colony that I caught, they did not survive. And by the time I did like a January hive check, they were gone, they were just dead. The other two hives seemed like they were doing good when I did that January hive check, but then when I went back in in, I think it was like late March, early April to check on them again, it seemed like one of the hives just suddenly died. Like there were thousands upon thousands of dead bees just spilled out by the hive. I didn't even know what happened. I'm still trying to get my answers on that one. But uh, yeah, so that, that second hive that I installed earlier in the spring died. But then the third hive, which I also installed last spring, made it through the winter. And so I was very happy about that. And so we were able to have one of our beehives survive. That's the first time it's ever happened. This is going into my third year of keeping bees. My first year, I killed both hives by the time spring of last year rolled around. So I had to add two new hives. This year, I killed two of the hives, but one of them I feel like has an asterisk because that really wasn't my hive. I was just doing the best I could. But I did finally get one to survive through the winter. Now my goal is to try to get three hives to survive in the winter. I have three hives going because I bought two more um, colonies of bees or nukes of bees. I installed the new bees into one of my old hives as well as installing it into the new flow hive, which is kind of a unique and interesting design. The flow hive lets you actually harvest honey without actually pulling out frames. Typically what you're going to do is pull out the frames and then you either spin it or process it other ways. With the flow hive, you just almost tap it like a keg and the honey pours out. Some beekeepers are super critical of it. Others absolutely love it. I'm giving it a try just to see what I think and you guys will see my experience with it all. And so for me personally, the jury's still out on the flow hive, but all three hives are doing really, really well. But yesterday morning, I went in and did like my first official hive check as well as installing the uh, honey supers for the two hives that are in the traditional beehives that I have and everybody looked really good. Everything seemed really healthy. There was just a ton of activity. We've got a lot of blossom activity going on right now, and so there's just plenty of feed for them, and so, yeah, things are going really, really well. Fingers crossed this year on the bees. I will try to show you guys, but I will say I'm sometimes reluctant for a couple of reasons. I think one reason I'm reluctant to show so much about the bees is because I'm still so such a beginner. Yes, you heard that right. A beginner. Bee. Beginner. <laughs> and like, I just constantly get kind of the, the rudest comments from people who are experienced beekeepers about my learning to beekeep, which is super frustrating, but that just comes with the territory of the internet. I think the other reason I'm sort of reluctant is because it's really hard to make bee videos. Like even the hive checkup, you know, in theory, I would have made that a video unto itself, but it's so hard to shoot videos with like all the beekeeper costume stuff on that it never motivates me to want to shoot a video and get dressed up to check on the bees. And so, I don't know, you might see glimpses, but it won't be a lot of bee content here. Of course, Pablo Barncat fears not the bees. He is camping out right now just underneath the flow hive. I actually have this beehive here in this central location just because... I don't know, I wanted to be able to watch it more closely just because I think it's very fun and interesting. But I didn't expect Pablo to be camping out underneath it. Of course, Toby Dog's sleeping in a hole. That's something I always expect this time of year. 
Good morning. How are my little gooselings? Yeah, our class of goslings is doing really well. You can see the bigger guys, they're almost three weeks old. Then there's the little guys who are about eight days old, but all of them are doing really well. They go outside during the day. I gotta clean pretty much daily now. I mean, I actually just cleaned this yesterday afternoon and you can already see it's a mess. They like to visit with Auntie Abby. She does really well with them. They've had a lot of practice lately, so things are good. Hi guys. Oh, looks like you need more feed, huh? Yeah, unfortunately, every time I feed them, I terrorize them. I gotta come up with a better system for that. Overall, they're actually very friendly, but they get very scared whenever we come inside their brooder because we're just big, scary giants. It's okay, little ones. Don't be terrified. I do have all this grass growing for them that I'll let them eat pretty soon. Now, two days ago, we had our next class of goslings hatch, and most of the goslings hatched out pretty well, but we had four goslings that were stuck in their shell, and and so my wife, Allison, and I sprung into action. Hi, babies. Hey, Hi. Welcome to the world, guys. But also, I don't think this guy's that strong because so, he's not pushing out. Come on, guys. He's practically here. Hi there. Okay, pop him in. I'm going to set you free. So I'm going to go around the top here. Yeah. Baby's pushing. Come on, let gravity help. Hey, look at that Hey, one. welcome to the world, baby. Come Good on. Good job, nice work. Come on, let's put him back in. There, this one's so good, what a brave baby. So this one's done all the way at the top. Okay, feels like it's loosening up. Yeah, you got it. Come on, come on out. Yeah, push, push, push. There, yeah, you got it. Hey, Blinks, I got one for you, right down here. How beautiful baby goose things are. Oh, no, no, don't chew on that. Don't, don't you chew on that. Don't start being a big goose. Aren't they beautiful? Adorable. Thanks for letting me help take care of the other babies. Anytime. Oh, ho, ho. yeah, two little bit chompy chumps. You know what's so funny is how they instinctually nest against you, or nestle against you, is the word. <laughs> Good morning, little ones. How's it going, guys? How are you doing, little ones? Huh? I'm just gonna pull this out for a second so everybody can say hi to you. We got a full class of healthy, happy goslings, and everybody is doing really, really well. Even some of the ones, like this was a, one of the late hatches. This one spent a couple extra days in the incubator. Actually, an extra day, I should say. This one is another one. You can see she's like a little bit less robust and big compared to her brothers and sisters. Same thing with this one. This was the one that we were really the most worried about, that first one that I did. As you can see, they're doing fine, and they seem like they're growing up pretty well. I'm keeping them inside here. They'll probably stay in this, and I'll probably actually split them up when I clean their crate later this morning and put them in two of these containers. But I wanna keep them inside for at least another day or two before mixing them in with the older goslings. Because the oldest of the older goslings are so much older, I don't want to have them get crushed. And so giving them enough time to be, I don't know, maybe three or four days old, probably what I'm looking for before I set them all loose. I might even hold the littlest ones like this one and this one back and just give them a further chance to develop so that by the time they get outside, they are fully ready to go and happy and healthy. But yeah, every single one, even the ones that we rescue hatched have survived. And so we got a good class, 16 goslings in this class. So we're, we're right on track. If you're doing the numbers at home, you can try to guess what my hatching percentages are in the comments. But by the time hatching season's all over, I'll give you guys the full rundown. We still have two more classes of goose eggs ready to go up in the incubator. And so those will be hatching in the next, uh, I don't know, two plus weeks. But uh, yeah, these guys are doing great and everybody's looking really good. So I will say though, the one gosling that I hatched at the end of that video I made uh, last week, Unfortunately, that one did not make it. And so that's actually been my only death so far. We've sold a bunch of goslings. We got a bunch of goslings. But uh, yeah, so far our mortality rate has been really, really good. Where, oh, where can my little Piggly Wigglies be? Get out of there. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, you're squeezing the juice way too quick. Fresh slop. So they have some brewer's grains mixed with a little bit of cracked corn. Sorry, Phil, I got you right on top of the head. 
The pigs broke my pig waterer again, and so I'm back to watering them by hand. Still working on finding a good design. A couple of viewers have actually sent me a few ideas that I think I'm gonna test out very soon. Now it's time to check on the waterfowl here at our farm. And yes, today's video has a lot of stops because I really wanted to try to show you every single animal that we have on the farm, or at least check in with everybody. And I don't know, maybe based on that, you guys are probably getting why I don't necessarily feature every animal in every video. Good morning, ducks and geeses. How's everybody doing? Yeah, so far their exploration in the permaculture orchard is going really really well. I'm gonna keep moving their watering stations throughout as well as their feed stations. But actually this time of year I don't feed them a ton. I'm actually only feeding them every other day because the geese don't necessarily need it and with the ducks out here this is sort of like the end of the major part of my duck egg season. We'll see what happens there. And so yeah I actually forced them to graze and forage more versus relying on the farmer to provide them with fresh food. The biggest thing I need to provide them with is Security, which comes in the form of Mr. Toby Dog, as well as the fence, along with fresh water. But yeah, when I used to dream of having ducks and geese on the farm, wandering through a permaculture orchard, it pretty much looked exactly like it does right now, which makes me very, very happy. Would you look at this? I got a patrol of birds following me up the hill. <laughs> hey, Bonnie, how are you now? Good, and you? So yeah, Belinda and Bonnie are doing really well in their little spot here. I come up here yeah, once or twice a day. Usually my job is just to move the water trough and refill it. It's interesting to see that the birds are following me up here. I was wondering how they would interact with these girls. You know, last year, the birds were pretty shy of the cattle, but they also weren't forced to come up here as much. And so I wonder if they might be doing some work on the cow pies that are up here, kind of playing the same role that the chickens do. There's a cow pie right on my hose. I swear putting in this watering system was such a good decision. Very, very good investment. Bang for your buck. Well, you don't want to rush into building water or fencing infrastructure. I feel like one of the lessons I've learned over the years is you often don't want to wait too long either. There we go. Hit them with the good stuff. Yeah, I wonder why these birds came up here like this. Yeah, you guys know that this is where all the fresh grass and bugs are, so... You're smart to come here. I know one question I got when I moved the birds up here to the permaculture orchard was like, how would Toby Dog be able to protect this area if I fenced it off? And there's actually a doggy door that used to be on his old dog house, way, way, way down actually over there. You can't quite see it right now because that shelter's blocking it, but just past it is a gate. Gosh, would you guys look at that smoke out there? One of my neighbors is doing a controlled burn of like a whole bunch of logging access, which, you know, is sometimes necessary, but it's crazy to see how much smoke's been coming out of there over the last couple of days. I think that fire's been going for like three or four days now. I got a drone shot the other day just because I was really curious about what the heck was going on. And wow, it's, it's something. Oh, look, Bonnie McMurray likes the fresh water. You're such a pretty girl, Bonnie. One day, maybe I can get you eating out of my hand. I should have brought some treats with me. Of course, I have a leaky spot on my hose and I just caught Belinda licking it. Gosh, I wish I could brush her out. Back off there, girl. Please don't drink from that. You're going to break it. There's plenty of fresh water down at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, you got all that strenus on you. I got to get that off you. Of course, you probably just rub it off on the trees. That's what I was expecting. That's why I actually started them up in this corner first, because I knew that they were shedding and would like the opportunity to do a lot of rubbing. Yeah, she was thirsty. I filled up the water tub last night, so I'm surprised it was empty. That happens sometimes. Just noticed that duck hiding out in there. I wonder if I'm going to find a duck egg. Ha! Ah! I'm gonna find a duck egg. Here we go. Fresh as they come too. Wow, look at that. Yeah, it's harder to keep the duck eggs. That's the one downside to this methodology of keeping my birds. But I really like what it seems like it's doing for them. It's also relatively easy to manage. So the next big task I have for myself here on the farm is to come in and clean up this whole area. Like what I'm gonna do is come in with the tractor now that the chickens are gone scoop up all this bedding. Wow, would you look at that? I mean, that's just pure chicken poop right there. What do you think, Toby Dog? And so I'll set that aside and either spread it around the farm or compost it for a future year. And so, yeah, that'll be a nice way to harness all the fertility. And then I'll come in here and start dropping seedlings in for food for the animals. What the heck is going on here? What are you doing? What's going on here? Are you actually trying to eat my eggs? What's going on? Why did, did you hide from the rest of the chickens? You didn't go in your coop last night. What's up with you, girl? Well, this is a mystery that I'm gonna have to solve on the farm and I don't even know what I'm gonna do with her. Hey, are you okay? Huh? 